Hi, my name is Miranda and I'm going to show you a tool called Kami, which is a PDF editing tool, among other things. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the features that it offers and then also show you how you can assign it to your students in Google Classroom and how your students can use the tool to complete the document. So uh, a common request that we've been receiving is teachers would like to assign a page, a page for example, out of the Bridges curriculum um, and have their students be able to type straight onto that PDF. Um, another example would be uh, you want to assign a short story, an article, or something like that that's on a PDF to your students, and you want them to be able to annotate that document. Kami is a great tool for doing all of that, um, and it has some really other awesome features to it, which I'm going to show you. So I just downloaded this PDF from the Bridges curriculum, um, and I saved it in my drive. Here it is. I'm over in my drive. Here is that PDF, and all I did was click on this Open With, Annotate with Kami. And I'll show you how to access Kami and how to get it on your computer in just a little bit, but I wanted to start off by kind of enticing you um, by showing you some of the features that Kami offers. So I went and said open with Kami, and now here's that same PDF, and I have it in this kind of Kami editing window with all these tools. Um, so I'm going to pretend that this is an assignment that I want to give to my students. So as I show you some of the features that you could add for your students onto this document, you'll also get some examples of what Kami can do. So the first most common kind of request we get is text box. So Kami allows students to um, type straight onto a PDF and also the teachers. So I'm just going to click this text box here and right up here. Uh, for my students, be sure to explain your thinking. So there's some text that I've added right there, um, and you can add text anywhere onto this PDF um, simply by selecting text box and clicking on your screen. Another really great feature is um, this markup tool. So you can highlight uh, any text on here. Again, this would be great for an article, and you want your students to highlight certain parts of the article. So if I click on markup and then over here, I hover over this, you can see my text highlighter. I'm gonna use that and maybe I want to highlight my title here. Um, you'll notice it highlighted it in gray, but if I click on it, I can change that to any other color I want. Um, and maybe I want to highlight something here for my students, some important information. You guys get the idea. There, now my text is highlighted. Again, all of these tools that I'm showing you, your students have access to exactly the same ones. So they could be doing this on the document as well. Another great feature of Kami is the commenting tool. So if I click on comment over here, I could choose to add a text comment, a voice comment, and even a video comment. So I'll show you quickly show you all three of those. Here's the text comment. I could click here and um, maybe I want to add a comment about this over here. And you'll notice this is very similar to Google Doc uh, commenting, that it adds this comment box over here. And be sure to read this, sorry, carefully. Um, all right, maybe that's my comment for my students. Notice that there's also this microphone, which allows me to do voice typing. So if your students aren't proficient typers, they can still add text comments using voice typing. I would recommend reading this question two or three times before you try and answer it. I would recommend reading this question two or three times before you try and answer it. And there you go. Um, I just needed to click on that microphone, say what I wanted to put into text, and then click on the microphone to finish. There's also this a voice comment. So voice comment is different from voice typing over here. Voice typing listens to your voice and puts whatever you say into text. Voice comment will create an audio file of your voice. So I'm gonna use this part, maybe I want to record my voice reading the text. So I'm gonna highlight all of this and then read it for my students. The third box has five rows of crayons. How many crayons are there? Fill in the blank and write an equation. Be sure to show all of your work. And now I have this nice voice file for my students to play. The third box has five rows of crayons. You guys get the idea. 
Finally, um, there's the video comment, which I think is great. Um, you could introduce this assignment to your students. You could explain something in more detail, whatever it is. So I'm going to show you that. And um, something to note is that um, I have selected the tool, and this is true for voice comment as well. Right when I click on the document, it starts recording. So be ready to record. Hi everybody, this is your activity for the day called More Crayons. I would really like you to take your time and make sure to explain your thinking. You can use the video tool or the voice tool to explain your thinking for each question. Good luck! And there you go, you guys get the idea. Now I have a nice personalized video for my students um, when they start this activity. Okay. So now that I've given you an overview, um, I want to show you how you could assign something like this to your students. Before I show you how to assign it in Google Classroom, I do want to show you how to get this tool. Um, hopefully I've hooked you now and you are interested in um, putting this tool on your computer. So the tool has been pushed out to all student accounts. Um, and you can see it up here. It's this, this is Cami's logo. Um, it's an extension on my Chrome browser. I believe it's also been pushed out to teacher accounts. However, if you don't see this Cami extension when you're logged into your Chrome browser, you have to be logged in with your PVUSD account, um, I can show you how to get that. So I'm gonna go over to the apps uh, uh, icon over here. You can also just Google Chrome Web Store and here's the web store and open up the web store and then I'm just going to do a search for Kami and add it to Chrome and you must have the extension installed you and your students in order to be able to use the tool. The extension is free um, and there are some uh, some of the features that I've showed you already are free a uh, part of the free version. PVUSD has a upgraded account in, until June 30th um, so uh, some of the other non-free features are available to you now, but only up until June 30th. So now here I'm in the Chrome Web Store. I'm going to type in Cami. There it is. So I already have it installed, which is why it just gives me this Rate It button. If you don't have it installed, you're going to see right here where this Rate It blue button is, you're going to see Add to Chrome, and you're just going to click on that, and then it'll um, add it into your Chrome browser up here for you, and then the tool is ready for you to use. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to push out an assignment in Google Classroom uh, for your students to use the Cami tool with. So I'm over here in a Google Classroom. Normally you land on the stream. Because this is an assignment, I'm going to go over to my Classwork stream or tab, click on Create, and something new that you'll notice after you install that extension from the Chrome Web Store, if it's not already installed, you'll see Assignment and Cami Assignment now under this Create button. Um, you can actually push out a Cami assignment um, or something like what I just showed you how to create uh, using the assignment tool or the Cami assignment tool. Um, there's just a few little differences, um, none which will prevent your students from completing the assignment um, completely. Um, so I'll just kind of point out those differences as we go, but I'm going to select a Cami assignment. And what this does is open an assignment screen similar to a regular Google Classroom assignment, but this is actually, you can see it looks slightly different. This is kind of Cami's assignment screen. And this is what I've noticed to be the biggest difference between choosing just a regular Google Classroom assignment or a Cami assignment from that drop down menu. So you have the same options up here, which Google Classroom, which students. Um, published or draft, right? This is the same as in Google Classroom. You have the option to just assign it or to save this as a draft. And here I'm going to type um, more crayons activity. Hopefully I'll spell it correctly. Okay, I could type some instructions, whatever it is, and you'll see all the regular features here, points, give it a due date, etc. Um, and right at, and I can also add a topic here. Another big difference that you'll notice between um, 
choosing just a regular assignment or a Kami assignment from that drop-down menu is this option here, send Kami instructions to students. If I check this box, and I'll do it just so you can see what it looks like, it basically adds a view-only file onto the assignment for your students to look at um, and in case they need help learning how to use the Kami tool. Um, so uh, I'll show it to you. I think it's this um, might be more beneficial for upper grade students as the document might be a little bit hard to understand for younger grade students. Um, and then finally, I want to add that Kami assignment that I created. So I'm going to go over here to my Google Drive. And um, when I go to my Google Drive from, the, from this Kami assignment, um, the nice thing it does is it actually um, organizes, it gives me a tab to filter just by PDFs in my Google Drive. Um, so I could click there, and then um, it also creates this nice folder, Kami Assignments, um, and houses all the documents that I've edited with Kami there. Um, so I'm going to do a search for, it was, gave it a weird title. I'm just going to do a quick search for that document that I was just editing with you guys. Here it is. Notice it's still a PDF, um, but it has all those changes that I made on it, um, even though I can't see it in the preview. So I'm going to double click that to select it. Notice here it is. It's attaching it onto the assignment. This is the other thing. Another difference from choosing a regular Google Classroom assignment versus a Kami assignment is that it gives it defaults to this. Make a copy for each student recommended, um, which in most cases that's what you're gonna, how you're gonna wanna assign this to your students. Um, you'll notice here if I use that drop down menu, I also get those other two options um, that you would get with a regular Google Classroom assignments. They just um, actually explain them a little bit differently, but they're all three options are the same. Okay, now I'm ready to assign this to, this is my Google Classroom. It's gonna get pushed out to all my students as make a copy for each student. Now I'm gonna click assign. And from here on out, um, you'll notice this assignment appears in your Google Classroom as any other assignment. Um, and then this is kind of nice too. You can, um, it gives you a little notification. You can send your students the following link with instructions. Um, and this is nice. This is actually um, a link to a um, document, um, the same ones that you could attach onto there. Um, and it also has a link to, on this document, a video explaining how your students should annotate this document using Kami. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and now here it is, my More Crayons activity. You can see it appears with the same icon, right, um, as a regular assignment. And now I'm going to show you, um, actually I'll open this up real quick and just to show you uh, what it looks like from the teacher perspective. Here is that PDF that I want them to write their answers on. Here is that um, document that has all the instructions that I was referring to that might be better for upper grade students, but it just shows students how to install the Kami extension if they don't have it and how to open up the document using Kami. Now that I've showed you how to push this assignment out to your students, I'm now going to show you what it looks like from the student perspective. So I'm going to go up here and just switch over to a student account. Um, I am now in a student account in that same Google Classroom. Um, this is the assignment that my teacher pushed out to me. Um, and this is one difference that you'll see. Um, I talked about how there's just kind of subtle nuances between choosing a, uh, as a teacher, whether you assign something as an assignment or a Kami assignment. This is one of those differences, um, is that if I choose a Kami assignment, it'll say that the teacher posted a new assignment via Kami. Um, so that's kind of just a little um, flag to your students that they're going to need to use Kami to um, annotate the PDF. Um, again, if you chose a regular Google Classroom assignment and attached to that PDF that I annotated already um, and pushed it out to my students as a regular Google Classroom assignment, they will still be able to complete the assignment with Kami. Um, there are just some subtle differences um, between choosing a regular Google Classroom assignment and the Kami assignment, such as this. So um, I can also go over to my classwork uh, tab here and see, there it is, the more crayons activity. I'm gonna open it up and I see two items here. This is the um, item that I'm supposed to annotate. That's that PDF. 
Notice um, here are those instructions. I'm just going to go ahead and open that so you can see what the instructions look like. Again, that got attached onto my assignment because I checked that box um, when I chose to create a Kami assignment. It gives me the options. Do you want to attach instructions? And I checked the box, yes. This is what the instructions look like. So, um, and it goes through um, how the students would add this extension into their Chrome browser. Again, it's been pushed out to all PVUSD students, so they will already have it there. So these instructions, again, might be a little bit confusing, um, but it does go over down here um, how they are going to um, turn it in using Kami, and it also attaches this little video of how they use it with Google Classroom. Um, Kami has made their own video for parents and students, so that's kind of a nice link on there. So. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and view the assignment and get started on it. Again, here are those instructions. I put it over to the side here. This is the actual, right? It's nice. It organizes it by your work. This is the work that I want to do. So I'm going to open that. And this is kind of the big important thing that your students need to know is that when they get to this screen, they might start clicking on it and say, I can't do anything with it. What they are going to need to know is that they need to click this button up here, open with Kami. And they will only see this button if um, they have this Google Chrome extension installed, which again, it's been pushed out to students, so they should have it installed. But if they say, I can't do it, I don't see this open with Kami button, then um, you're going to have to instruct them to go to the web store, just like I showed earlier, and add Kami as an extension. Okay. Um, you'll see these little, um, you know, my highlighting, and then you'll see these kind of little comment bubbles. This is where I've added other um, video comments, etc., onto the document. Uh, in the preview screen, they just appear like these little bubbles. So now, as the student, I'm going to go ahead and open with Kami so I can start working on the assignment. And you'll see it takes you exactly into that same screen, the same options that you have as a teacher. Here it is, and it's going to take a second. But now it's loaded, right, my video, it's loaded my voice comments, right, all of these items um, for the student. Um, and now, as the student, I could choose to play my teacher's video. Hi, everybody. This, um, right, read all the comments, um, listen to the third voice box. comment, etc. And your students also have the ability to add all of those same features, right? So I could, as the student, come here. Right, I could say 24 crayons, just type straight onto this PDF. Um, I could choose maybe here. Um, I want to just add a video of myself explaining, of my voice explaining how I solved this, right? Um, so let's say here I say this is 36, and now I want to explain why I thought that was 36. Again, I could go over here to comment, add a voice comment, and add that file straight onto this document. For my teacher to listen to. The other nice feature um, that I would like to show you is uh, this text-to-speech. So if you are assigning, for example, an article, a short story or something like that that's on a PDF or even in a math document where you want, uh, where the students may want the text read to them, that's this text-to-speech option, which would be a great one to show your students. So once I select it, all I need to do is put my cursor where I want it to read, and it'll start reading it to me. Here I go. Mark has twice as many crayons as the box modeled on the number line in the problem above. Write an equation. And I can just hit stop to stop that. Um, there's also different voices here, so maybe they prefer. Mark has twice as many crayons as the voice. box modeled on the number line in the problem above. So you guys get it. They can also speed up or slow down the voice. So this is a great feature um, for the students who may have trouble reading some of the text. Again, you could add a, a file of yourself reading the text, or they could um, choose this text-to-speech option and have it read to them. All right, so I'm going to, oh, and um, one other thing I want to show you um, is this drawing tool. So I could choose my um, color here. This basically is just like a pen. Um, and you could choose how thick you want your pen, and I could um, choose to just draw straight on this document, um, whatever it is, so you guys get the idea, write my answer. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that now I am ready to um, turn this in to my teacher. Um, 
So just like in a regular Google Doc or another type of assignment you would assign to your students, um, you have, or the students have this turn in button here. They could choose to turn it in straight from here. It's also the same thing as in the assignment itself, clicking this turn in button. So they could choose to turn it in from either place. As a student, I'm going to turn it in. You'll notice it um, gives me this option again. Are you sure you want to turn it in? I'm going to say yes, turn in. All the changes that I've made are automatically saved. You can see right now it's just updating to Google Drive. It's now turning it in and I am done. I've turned it in to my teacher. Um, and notice again, you also have the, their students also have this unsubmit button. If they wanted to take it back for some reason, add some more uh, onto it, uh, they could do that clicking the unsubmit button. So here I am back over in the teacher view of this Cami assignment. I can see that one of my students has turned it in. Um, all of this functionality works the same as a regular Google Classroom assignment. How do you assign to Google Slides, Google Doc, etc. Um, so I can see one has turned it in. Again, here was the assignment that I wanted them to annotate. These were those instructions I attached. I'm going to go ahead and say view assignment. Um, I will see a preview of the document for each student, just like I would any other assignment. Um, I could also click into these and see my students working on it with Cami in real time, just as I would any other assignment. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open up this test two, two student one, just click on it to open it. I've already loaded it over here in this tab. Um, so you're going to click on it to open it, and now I can see my student work. One thing to note about this is um, I am in this kind of PDF preview of it, so I can see the items that were written or typed straight onto here. Um, if this is enough for me um, to grade it, etc., I could go ahead and just add my grade over here like I would anything else. Um, but if I asked my students to add a video or um, a, you know, a voice comment, anything along those lines, in order to be able to view those, I'm going to have to actually open it with Cami. So I can see here, right, these were all, um, I can see when things were added, etc. Um, and maybe I want to now um, view those things that my student has added. So I need to go to open with and then annotate with Cami. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it'll just load it in that same Cami browser. And then I'll be able to play my students' voice comments um, or videos, etc., things like that that they've added onto there. So now that it's opened in Cami, I now have full access to all those other features or items that my student may have added onto this document. I could look at it, listen to them, whatever it is, and then just go back over here and add my grade into this field and then go ahead and return it to the student. All right, so that is the workflow for using Cami, the PDF editor. Um, again, there's lots of great tools there. Um, I thought I should point out, I did mention, I think at the beginning of this, that we have the free version until uh, June 30th. You can see up here, trial ends in 57 days. That, that is referring to the premium features of Cami. So I thought it would be useful to point out to you guys what is a premium feature uh, versus the features that you're gonna have forever. Um, so, and you can always look this up yourself if you just go to camiapp.com slash pricing. Um, and we go down here, you'll be able to see um, we're on the school district plan. The items that basic is just what you would get at all times, these are all free. Right, so they can add a comment, add text, right? Just type their text straight onto there. Um, the things that are part of the paid version that we have until June 30th are right here. Adding images, video and audio annotation. Um, those are part of the paid version that we have until June 30th. Um, and again, down here, you could just go down here. Um, this is an important one that I think it's important to be aware of that we will only have until June 30th, at least as of right now, is that text to speech feature where the students can just click on the document and it'll read it to them. Um, so just be aware of that. And the final thing I wanted to, or actually second to last thing I wanted to point your attention to is that Cami has a YouTube channel um, and they have some really great videos on here that they've created just within the past month for remote learning. 
So they have this nice overview of Kami for remote learning. This one is good. Um, it's about 20 minutes long, um, but it goes over a lot of the other features that I haven't shown you yet uh, in this screencast. Um, and it also has this video, which is great um, to show your uh, families about how to use Kami with Google Classroom. It's a really short overview um, for them to review. So because it's a YouTube video, you could always just post that in Google Classroom for your students. Finally, I wanted to show you where this screencast and other uh, tools or um, items that we'll post about Kami related things. Um, so hopefully you're familiar by now with our distance learning website for teachers. I just accessed it under the staff tab of pbusd.net. And over here, if you go to digital tools, go ahead and click on that page. We have them um, um, organized by how you might use the tool here. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see Kami. Um, and then that'll just take you to a page where we have all our information related to Kami. Um, taking a second to load, but if you scroll down, you'll find the Kami section. We're getting there. There it is. Um, so right now we have linked just uh, two videos um, created by Kami. This screencast will also be posted here. And we're also going to create a video just for students on how to use Kami. Um, and that's going to be posted on this Tutorials for Students page. All right, feel free to reach out to DTIC at pvusd.net if you want more information or you want help using these tools. And um, you can find also our phone number right here, 786-2492. Thanks for watching.